Greetings and welcome to St. Mary's Episcopal Church in Kinston, North Carolina. Welcome to God's house, where it's good for us to be together in this way, to offer our gifts of praise and thanksgiving to our Lord. This is All Saints Sunday, one of the principal feasts of the church year. It's also a special Sunday because at our 9.30 a.m. in-person liturgy this day, Bishop Skirving, the eighth bishop of the Episcopal Diocese of East Carolina, will be worshiping with us in person. So not only do we celebrate this day the communion of saints and that mystical community uh, which uh, makes up the household of God, today we also um, lift up in our prayers and celebrate that 24 members of uh, St. Mary's Episcopal Church will either be received or confirmed in the Episcopal Church this day. Uh, of course, we celebrate that and we uh, remember them in our prayers. If you've not already, I invite you to uh, pull up the bulletin for this morning's worship service. Uh, this service will include a renewal of baptismal vows to, to bring us together with those who, have been, uh, who are being confirmed and reaffirming their baptismal vows in this rite of confirmation as well. Um, it'll also, that bulletin will also include some announcements about the life and ministry uh, at St. Mary's Church. One thing in particular that I just want to highlight and hope you'll spend some time uh, reading and considering is that next Sunday, next Sunday morning, uh, the people of St. Mary's Church uh, will be able uh, to gather once again for our principal Sunday morning worship uh, indoors. Uh, please read about what uh, that's going to look like in terms of uh, the things we are asking of those who will be in attendance and, um, and just keep everyone who will be participating in our worship life in that way in your prayers as we make steps and preparations towards next Sunday morning. <clears throat> also, if you are one who worships regularly online, know that these online offerings will continue to be offered to you. Uh, and also next Sunday, we will re be returning to our Christian formation offering with the Gospels course with the Reverend Dr. Randy Spa uh, at about 1045 next Sunday morning. Uh, so. A lot of things to, uh, to consider and to celebrate uh, this morning. I pray that you are well. I'm so glad that you are here and that we are here together in this way. And our liturgy will begin in just a moment. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, 
all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from the Re Revelation to St. John. After this, I, John, looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and around the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. And he will guide them to the springs of the water of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 34, verses 1 through 10 and 22. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me out of all my terror. Look upon him and be radiant and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him, and he will deliver them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. Fear the Lord, you that are his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and none will be punished who trust in him. A reading from the first letter of St. John. See what love the Father hath given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, 
We are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his, his disciples came to him. And then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who, per who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, friends, it is good to worship with you in celebration of All Saints Day. Increasingly for me, the celebration of All Saints has become a celebration of hope. From the traditions around this feast and from the language of the collect assigned for our use today, I find myself going back to language that can be found in the letter to the Hebrews. The first verse of chapter 11 reads like this. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. So much of the time, being a person of faith means living with hope for things that are very going to be very different than the life we live and the things we see now. Being faithful means trusting in God's promises and trusting that those things we cannot see but for which we hope will one day become real. The author of this letter, after offering these words, goes on to speak of men and women who themselves in their lives were examples of faithfulness, who were people who held a hope. He writes of Abel and Enoch and Noah and then goes on to speak at greater length of Abraham and Moses and then identifies uh, that there are so many others that he could offer that time would fail him if he tried to tell all of their stories. That in itself is a word of hope, that there are so many who have come before us whose lives bear witness to their hope in what they could not see and to their faithfulness in the God who made promises to them. This section is brought to a close for me, at least in the first words of the 12th chapter. The author writes, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, 
the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Friends, we are called to run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Many times, many days, many moments, we might rather step out of the race that we face. We might rather step away from the challenges of daily life and from the challenges that face us in the midst of a COVID pandemic, in the midst of um, a campaign season that has been bitter and acrimonious. We might rather step aside and yet by the witness of those who have come before us and most particularly through the example of Jesus, we are called to run with perseverance, the faith that lies open before us. In this morning's gospel reading, we hear Jesus offering the Beatitudes, a sermon offered both in the Gospel of Matthew as we hear it today, and also in the Gospel of Luke. And there is language of hope in these words as well. I've always had the sense that as Jesus would have preached this sermon, he would have been looking in the faces of those who sat around him. And in them and in their lives, he would have been seeing those who were poor or poor in spirit. He would have been seeing those who mourned. He would have been seeing those who were meek, those who hungered and thirsted for righteousness, those who were merciful, pure in heart, peacemakers, and those who were persecuted for righteousness sake. He would have seen those who in their present circumstances were suffering and who might have found it difficult to see hope. He looked at them, he looked right into their hearts, he saw them, he had compassion for them as was once put, um, as sheep without a shepherd, he loved them. And then he spoke words of promise Though they were poor now, poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven would be theirs. Though they hungered and thirsted for righteousness, one day they would be filled. Though that day they mourned, one day they would be comforted. He did not deny their present circumstances, but he pointed them ahead to a reality that perhaps they could not imagine, but for which they should hope. A reality which I expect they were able to accept with some faithfulness because of the promise that he made to them in the words of this sermon and so makes for us that same promise. That our reality is not limited to the things that we can see right in front of us, but our reality as children of God and as his followers is one that goes on into the future one that will be markedly different from what we see and know now. We can have confidence in hoping for that which we cannot yet see. In churches all around the world, All Saints Day is a time for the renewal of our baptismal vows, for the new renewal of our baptismal covenant. With St. Mary's and in-person worship this day, I will be present with those who gather and we will renew our baptismal covenant together. And then there will be many who are confirmed. In some churches, there will be those also who are baptized and who will have others, perhaps, say for them those promises which one day we pray they will make for themselves, as those who are being confirmed this day will do. Once upon a time, I was taught by uh, uh, an older and wiser priest that being baptized was like having an invisible tattoo marked on our foreheads. For in our tradition, when we are baptized, the priest will take their thumb and with water or with oil, a mark on our foreheads, the sign of the cross, saying words like this, 
by name, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Though that sign of the cross cannot be seen by the world around us, it remains there. God can see it. We know it is there. And through our renewal of our baptismal vows, we are reminded that that mark signifies whose we are. We belong to God through Jesus, and our lives are meant to demonstrate to the world in which we live our commitment to our faith in God through Jesus. That's where the power comes in the language of the baptismal covenant. In the words and in the actions of our lives, we are to demonstrate to those who meet us our faith in Christ crucified as expressed through the ancient creeds of the church. In renewing our baptismal covenant, we repeat in question and answer, answer form the Apostles' Creed. And then there are five critical questions asked of us to which we are called to respond, I will, with God's help. As we live these promises, we are called to be people who demonstrate, again, by our words and our actions, that we will continue in the Apostles' teaching and fellowship in the breaking of the bread and in the prayers. That we will persevere in resisting evil, but when we will, of course, fall into sin, we are to repent and return to the Lord. We are to show by our lives that we proclaim um, by word and example the good news of God in Christ, good news that is for us and for all people, good news which is about the hope of those things that are to come and the reality that we can have a taste of them in this life. Our lives are meant to demonstrate that we seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving our neighbors as ourselves. And our neighbor is not intended to be only those who live next door and with whom we have a lifetime of memories. Our neighbor is even to be that person who we might otherwise expect to pass on the street turning our head away when we see their troubles. Our neighbor in this election season is even intended to be that person who will vote very differently than us, that person who holds very different political perspectives than the ones we hold. By our lives, by our word and example, we are to strive for justice and peace among all people, respecting the dignity of every human being. I'm glad that the sign of the cross on my forehead is invisible because if it could be seen by the world around us, then I imagine that people would look at me, would look at us all differently. I would rather that I be judged by my words and by my actions than by a visible sign that is on my forehead. So friends, for me, All Saints is a time when we celebrate a hope that we have because of our faith in God through Jesus. A hope that things will one day be better, but a hope also that is rooted in God's promise that things will change. God's promise to be present with us now, to see us and to know us in our struggles and in our joys, and to be present with us as we run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Friends, whatever you are going through this day, whether it is a struggle at a deep and personal level with COVID, the illness, or the financial implications of COVID-19, whether you you are living with the kinds of stress and strain that have been made more obvious in our society because of the impact of COVID-19, or whether you are facing other challenges that have nothing to do with this pandemic. Whether you are struggling with broken relationships and strains around this election, which in a sense will be soon over, but in another sense will continue on beyond election day. 
please know that God is with you. You are surrounded by the cloud of witnesses who have gone before us, who have persevered in the race that they have run, who have remained faithful, holding on to a hope for that which they could not fully see themselves. Let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, trusting in the one who is the pioneer and perfecter of our faith in Jesus. Knowing that even when we cannot see around us the fullness of the kingdom of God, that we can trust and that we can hope fully that that kingdom is breaking out in our midst and will one day be fully known. Friends, it's good to have been with you for All Saints Worship. May God bless you this day and forevermore. Amen. Dear friends, at our in-person liturgy today, where many will be confirmed, all in attendance will have the opportunity to renew their, uh, their baptismal vows, their identities in Christ through baptism. And so that same opportunity is going to take place for us now in this way. So if you are already baptized, uh, consider renewing and reaffirming your baptismal vows through the baptismal covenant. And if you've not yet been baptized, listen closely to these words, the words that, of faith, but also the words uh, that drive us into action, uh, into the ways that we live our lives every day. And consider, pray about whether or not God is inviting you into this manner of living, and if baptism is something to which you are being called today. If so, I would love to speak with you whenever the time is right. The renewal of baptismal vows can be found in the bulletin for this morning's liturgy. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers. I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. We pray for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Rob, our diocesan bishop, and all bishops, priests, and deacons. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Guide the people of this land, especially Donald, our president, Roy, our governor, 
Don, our mayor, and people of all nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our hear prayer. Our Bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours. Grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially all who are on the St. Mary's Parish prayer list and those whose lives and livelihoods have, se have been seriously impacted by the coronavirus pandemic. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our parish cycle of prayer, we pray for the acolytes of St. Mary's and give thanks to God for all the ways in their ministries have been blessed to those who worship here. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our own needs and for those of others. Gracious Lord, we thank you for the mercies that you pour into this world and into our lives afresh each day. Thank you for the presence of your spirit in our lives and in our communities. And we ask for continual guidance by your Holy Spirit as we seek to serve you and to follow you each and every day. In the life of St. Mary's Church today, we thank you for those who have uh, committed afresh to you a life uh, of, of claiming their identity in your son Jesus through confirmation. We pray for their, them and their families at this special day on this special occasion. We also continue to pray for our entire St. Mary's Church family as we gather in different ways in this season and this time. We pray for all who are at our in-person liturgy this day. In our nation, we we lift up to you all who will be participating in the election on Tuesday and in the season around it. And so we lift up to you this prayer for an election. Almighty God, to whom we must account for all our powers and privileges, guide the people of the United States in the election of, of officials and representatives that by faithful administration and wise laws, the rights of all may be protected and our nation be enabled to fulfill your purposes through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And Lord, as the coronavirus pandemic appears to be spiking yet again in this nation, we continue to lift up all those who are working diligently towards finding a cure and effective treatment. Guide them in their work. Protect those who participate in the studies that will make such remedies and cures effective and possible. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, 
we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Friends, in this time when we are not able to physically gather around the Lord's table to share in communion in the context of this liturgy, I invite you now to join in an act of spiritual communion, whereby we seek with heart and body to make our full communion with God, beginning with the words that our Lord himself taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please pray with me. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people, at every altar of your church where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. We remember your death, Lord Christ. We proclaim your resurrection. We await your coming in glory. And since we cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you and you in us, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Every breath is a gift, and we only have so many moments to gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind, and the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.